Iconic crystals are finally available in Rise of Kingdoms for updating your legendary equipment to give you more base stats, which is amazing. But you may be wondering, which piece of gear do I put these Iconic crystals on? How exactly do they work? What's the priorities? Stick around in this video for everything you need to know. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and I am so hyped that in the middle of the night, they dropped Iconic Crystals to all servers, as well as the quest series that lets you get hammers and unlock some Iconic Crystals. Here's what we're going to talk about in this video. The number of Iconic Crystals you can lock, how important it is to use them, and where exactly you should put them. So, based on what we know so far, you can get four total Iconic Crystals from the quest series that just dropped in-game, which means... Everybody in every kingdom should go and prioritize this. I don't care what power level your account is. Based on what we know right now, there's only a grand total of six Iconic Crystals that are obtainable. And presumably some of these events will repeat, but maybe not. We don't know if this event is coming back or if this is a one-time thing or it will in the future just be a new kingdom thing. So given, even if you have a very young account and, and you don't know if and when you might need this, I think it's still worth getting these things, just throwing it out there. But let me just explain. How do you get them all? Four of them available from Artisan's Forge. One is available from the Season of Conquest KVK called Crystal Quest. I don't know if there's a KVK Season 1 and 2 equivalent or KVK Season 3 equivalent. Maybe there will be. And then also from Lost Canyon, there is one that you can purchase, and it's very obtainable. It's like 20,000 currency, extremely easy to do. So you're going to want to get these crystals, these iconic crystals, because... Basically, anytime you make a legendary piece of gear, as long as you have one of these crystals, you can go and apply the Iconic Crystal. It will run you 20 million gold. If you were to dismantle the item, you would never get the Iconic Crystal back. So, for the most part, you shouldn't be forging legendaries anyways you plan to dismantle because you lose half the materials. And now the developers are really doubling down on the fact that like, you really should not dismantle legendaries. Choose wisely and invest well. So with that said, what buffs do you actually get? Just cool, you've said they're so necessary. What, what do they do? They give you a stat boost, but it's not a percent stat boost. These percent stats modify your unit base stats. The, the Iconic Crystals actually give you unit base stats. And the Iconic Crystals don't exactly do more of what your equipment was already doing. They're giving base stats based off of what armor slot they're in. So for example, uh, all leg pieces give health. All boot pieces give health. All chest pieces and helmets are going to give base unit defense. And all weapons and gloves are going to give you attack. Now, uh, in addition, accessories do even more. Uh, the reason I say they do even more is because everything I've showed you so far will enhance the unit type that the item is associated with. So, for example, these Van Braces of the Eternal Empire, they're infantry stuff, right? It's an infantry glove, and so it gives you infantry base attack stat. Makes sense. But accessories could be used on any troop type, right? So, the accessories give you base health for all troop types. This is very relevant for defending your city, because you have all troop types present, obviously. Uh, it's very good for mixed marches where you have all troop type present. But most importantly, there is a lot of flexibility in putting this onto an accessory. Because you can switch if you've got, you know, a ring of doom. If you're really into infantry now and you want to put it on, you know, an archer or a cavalry march later, great. You can still use it. I'm going to talk about my recommended order in just a couple minutes here. But, but accessories will be very important for that reason, how versatile they are. Now, with that said... How many stat points are you actually getting? Every Iconic Crystal is giving you three base stat points, but you get one bonus if you have a special talent on the item. Uh, so you can see over here, because this is an infantry special talent, on an infantry commander, I have the opportunity for one more base point. Now, if you are not yet in the Season of Conquest KVK, you do get fewer base points. If you are in Season 1 and 2, it's one base point, plus one if you have a talent. Season three is two base points, plus one if you have talent. And then Season of Conquest, KVK4 and beyond is three plus one. So even if you're early in the game and you had legendaries, which is kind of unlikely actually, uh, you would still get some really major benefits. More likely is that a player has migrated back and that's how they're 
getting a lot of this legendary equipment potentially. Now, before I go over the priority list here for what you should upgrade, I do want to point out that base stats are, again, very different than those percent stat boosts that enhance the base stats, okay? So the percent stat boosts are boosting, when you tap the info button, the base stats that you see here. Now, I still need to get into the nitty-gritty of all the math, and I want to prove this for sure, but the working theory, um, courtesy of my kingdom uh, that I'm working with here, is that because KVK technology gives you so much attack percent boost that actually the iconic equipment for weapons and gloves, which give you base attack, are really good because all of the extra percent boosts you get because of the Season Conquest uh, KVK technology boost attack are going to make it so that attack stack goes a little bit longer, gives, gives you more value than you would get otherwise from other stat types, even though I have proven repeatedly that in general you would prioritize health over defense, because we're modifying the base stat, I think you're actually going to be better off now boosting the attack. I'm not saying switch all your equipment to attack. I'm saying when it comes to priority for your iconic crystals, here's what you should do. First and foremost, I think that accessories are a slam dunk. If you change your mind, then you will be really happy that you put your iconic crystal onto an accessory uh, with regard to what march you care about the most. So I think start with two legendary accessories if you have them. Great place to start. From there, I think that weapon and gloves should be your next priority. Again, that is because elevating the base stat is a bigger deal when you have more modifiers for that base stat. And because there are so many modifiers for attack, including your alliance technology, including KVK technology, I think that's a really good choice. From there, it depends a little bit on what troop type you're using. If you are using cavalry, where the majority of your equipment is actually going to be health equipment, and let me show you, a really killer cav set is going to have health on the chest piece, health on the legs, health on the boots, health on the gloves. For a set like this, I actually think for calves, you would go for health next, which means legs or boots, and then you would do defense last, that is chest or uh, helmet. But for most other troop types, for example, you look at my infantry gear, I got defense, I got defense, I got defense, I got defense. Oh, and I got defense over here and a little bit of attack. So for infantry <clears throat> or for archers, I think you are probably better off going the route of, you know, again, accessories first for everything here, then weapon and gloves then probably go with helmet and chest piece. And then last but not least is going to be legs and boots for the extra base health stat. Now, I want to run a bunch of tests to actually confirm that that works the way that I think it will. I want to run those tests in game, not off of calculators, because I want to see it with my own eyes that it works the way that I would expect it to work. So I want you to take that with a grain of salt with all these recommendations. And quite frankly, the difference between getting one base stat or another is so minimal that like, yeah, it's a prioritization list, but honestly, it's fine. Like whatever you do is going to be fine. However, if you are a rally lead or a garrison captain, all of your investments need to be in one place. So for me, I'm going all in infantry. Seems like a really good time. I've got the literal best set you can have in the game. I have the infantry health city theme. I have the commanders that are likely to be the garrison and the infantry rally. So, yes, I'm going all in infantry. That's the game plan. But I promised you that I would show you, at least I think I did, uh, at the start of the video, that I would apply an Iconic Crystal. So let's go and do that now. I actually have one unlocked on my restart account. And so let's apply it and just get a look. I mean, I don't think there's going to be any fanfare here. We're just going to apply the thing and you'll see how, you know, what it looks like once I've done that. So let's go now and I'll show you... Uh, the equipment that I have is a little bit lackluster. This is my restart. It's a younger account. And I say it's lackluster because I have saved up in the realm of like 350 legendary materials now. We migrated back to KVK Season 2, and I did not spend almost any materials. I did not spend almost any legendary commander sculptures because I knew I wanted to save up and hoard for whatever was going to be good when we got back into the Season of Conquest and make long-term investments here, you know? 
So on this account, I have a couple sets, three. And I will make a fourth and maybe a fifth. However, I've got this set. I've got a set on Trajan. I've got this gear on Alexander the Great. And for canyon purposes, I've got, weirdly enough, this thing, <laughs> which will most likely get dismantled or repurposed on Ethelfled. Of note, though, I do have a dagger here. And then, uh, oh, uh, no gear on Esong. Gosh, I don't, do I even have gear on my fifth march in Canyon? I do. It's Minamoto. Okay. For whatever it's worth. The gear on Minamoto. So what would I prioritize for this particular account if I make my way into the forge, which I will do now, go to the iconic section. I told you that accessories are the most important, which means it's either going to be horn, dagger, or web. And I think for this account, I am likely, because it's really an open field account, I am likely to prioritize um, Horn and Dagger as the two most important based on what I have now. I might be making a Ring of Doom. If I made a Ring of Doom, I would probably prioritize Horn and Ring in the off chance that I run a counter rally. It could be really important to have those. Granted, maybe for a counter rally, actually Dagger would be better. So actually, actually... Perhaps in all cases, horn and dagger might be the way to go. You know, I think I've actually talked myself into a dagger. Because if I'm running a counter rally, it's the way. I'm not going to be a primary garrison or primary rally uh, in almost any circumstance in this kingdom. So, yeah, let's do let's do the concealed dagger, which comedically is on my Ethelfled right now. So, I have the materials or at least the capability of getting the materials. We'll go to the Artisan's Forge. I did my quest already. We go to the shop. We use my hammers to claim the Iconic Crystal. I thought I told it to notify me when I spend my Iconic Crystals or, or my uh, hammers here, so that's a little interesting. And now we go, and let's actually make this thing, shall we? The first Iconic item I have ever made. Here on my restart account, a Concealed Dagger. Seems like a great choice. Okay, smashing the button. The Iconic Crystal Upgrade. 20 million gold. Let's do it. Boom. Okay. There it is. Troop base health boosted by 3%. Let's freaking go. Now, it's giving me the option to go refine, but I obviously can't refine this particular item. I don't have more of it. And at some point, I will refine it. But the point of putting it on that particular item is that it's so versatile. Even though I have a talented infantry boot, which is pretty nice. I'll probably put one on that boot. Um, I still feel like the versatility of putting it onto the accessory like I just did was really important um, because I can put this thing anywhere, anywhere I want, and uh, get a lot of value from that, which is amazing. The final consideration that I'm going to give you as you think about where you're going to put your iconic crystals is that you probably want to focus on whatever is your last and most powerful march. So when you're running out of troops and all you can bring is one or two marches, you probably want your iconic crystals to be on the commander that you would use in that situation, which for me is like, yeah, I mean, I'm going to use Guan. Like that dude is going nowhere. It's going to be like, if I had one infantry march and I'm running that in the field. It's Guan CPO, hands down, no questions asked. So I'd put my dagger on Guan. I would feel fine about that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's good stuff, man. Now, if I switch back to my main... To show you my game plan over there, I only have four Iconic Crystals now. At least I will at the end of this quest series. So on my main account for a rally my, or, or garrison, my game plan is to go in and do the following items. If I make my way to the set, I am going to do both my accessories first. That will be ring and horn. From there, as promised, I think attack is a good choice. So I will do weapon and gloves. And then once I get into KVK uh, and I start to acquire more of the Iconic Crystals, I will probably do Helmet. That'll be my first one from Lost Canyon. And then the next one I will do when Crystal Quest is completed, which is going to take a while, then I will do probably the chest piece. And then the last pieces that I will do are the boots and the legs. And uh, before I do all of those investments, I'm going to do a ton of testing to see if the Iconic Crystal base stat boosts work the way I would expect them to work. They should, but we'll see. 
And if you want to see how that testing pans out, consider subscribing to the channel. If you found this video helpful, throw a like on here and subscribe. It actually helps the channel a ton and means a lot to me personally. And if somehow you missed all the guidance I've been giving about CPO recently, the new CPO, the, the enhanced CPO coming back into the game, I'll have a card up in the top for everything you need to know about CPO and why and how you should prepare to use them. Until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies.